Hello and welcome back to part two of Iris Classification. I am Adam with Push the Envelope, the channel that gives you everything artificial intelligence and machine learning. As I mentioned, this is part two, so if you have not done part one yet, I went through, imported the data, scaled it, and did some data visualization. So you should go ahead and check that out and get caught up and ready to go for this video. In this video, we are going to be implementing a decision tree. Now, for those who are new to machine learning and don't know what a decision tree is yet, Go ahead and check out the video that I have. I put it right before this and I'll link it right now. It is an introduction to decision trees. Very quick video on how decision trees work and how we can use them to solve problems. But for those who are staying tuned to the series and have already caught up on that, let's go ahead and jump to the Jupyter Notebook and start implementing our decision tree on iris classification. All right, swapping over to the notebook, you can see we already have our data frame ready to go. Now, if you didn't tune in to the first video, uh, we went ahead and imported the data frame, scaled it, and did some visualization on it. So go ahead and check that video out, or just pause the video right now and copy everything I did here, and you'll be at the same point. For those who did tune in the first video, I took the code that we did the last time, removed all the visual visualization, so I only got to the point where um, we got our scaled data frame. Okay, now we're going to be importing some modules from scikit-learn to help us um, build the classifier and predict and score our classifier. So from sklearn.tree, we are going to be importing our main classifier and that is a decision tree classifier. Additionally, we are going to be importing from sklearn.model selection. Uh, we're gonna be importing train test split in addition to randomized search CV and grid search CV. If you don't know what these modules are, don't worry about it, I'll go over what each of them are. However, I do have a video on scikit-learn where I go through every single one of these and explain how you can use them. Um, just a beginner's tutorial of what they're meant for and how you can utilize them for machine learning. Last thing I'm going to implement is from sklearn, Dot metrics, I'm going to be importing accuracy, score, and classification uh, underscore report. Go ahead and run that cell to get those in there, and we will move on. So the first thing we need to do, we need to get our X and Y values to be ready and uh, ingestible into the decision tree classifier. To do that, we're going to define X as the scale data frame that we just made, so everything up here. Now, the X is only the input value, so it's only sepal length, sepal width, petal length, petal width. In order to get only those, we're going to take the dot values, and we are going to take all of the rows, and we only want the columns up to four. So that means zero, one, two, and three, so all of these input values will be taken. Now just to be sure that we're in the right type, um, I'm just going to do dot as type int. Uh, sorry, no, uh, these will be np dot floats. Uh, I'll just do 32 bit float. This may not be necessary, but if you're running into an error where it's an unrecognized um, value that you're passing in when you're trying to fit your function, this may be why. So I'm just going to get rid of that possibility right now by doing this. Again, so Y values, I'm taking the data frame dot values. Now I only want the integer value column right here. I don't want the target name column. So I am going to be taking all of the rows and I only want the fourth column. Now this one is going to be as type uh, int. So taking the floating values for X and the integer values for Y. Again, you may not need this, but just to be safe, I'm going to put it in there. Okay, now that we have our X and Y values, we need to split those into training and testing sets. And we are gonna use the train test split function that we imported from sklearn. This function is gonna spit out four different values. So it's gonna be the X train values, X test values, Y train values, um, and the Y test values. Okay. The function again is train test split. 
and we're going to be passing in some values for it to split for us. Now, again, it needs the X values and the Y values, obviously. And it's going to be taking those and it's going to be splitting them into a test set. So we need to define what our test size is. I want to say I want 20% of my data to be in the test set. So I'm going to pass 0.2 in there. And one more value I'm going to add is random state. And I'm going to set that equal to one. What is this doing? Well, the train test split is going to randomly split all of this data. And I want this to be repeatable for you guys. So you can follow line by line what I'm doing here and get the same results. So I'm going to fix the randomness using this. If you want it to be random, get rid of the statement or change it to a different value and it will give you a different training and testing split. Okay, let me go ahead and just print the shapes of each of these to see how much data we are actually working with. And y test.shape. And we'll go ahead and print those out. So as you can see, we have 120 training points and 30 testing points, um, which would be that 20% split. Okay, we have our training and testing data. So now we can go ahead and start making our classifier. So I'm going to define a new classifier as CLF. And that is going to be equal to our decision tree classifier. Again, that is the module that we imported up here. And like I did with the train test split, I am going to fix any randomness in here using the random state uh, variable. So I'm going to set the random state to one. Again, if you want to have your own, um, if you want the randomness or you want a different split or a different way of classifying, change these random states or completely remove them. Uh, next, I will go ahead and start training our model. So clf.fit is how you start to train. I need to pass it in the training data, so the input data, but I also need to pass it in what those uh, final results are so we can start mapping them. So pass in X train and Y train, and that will train the model. Now I'm going to do a dot score because once it's done training, I want to know how well it has done. So I'm going to do dot score and pass in X test and Y test. And we can go ahead and run this. So we fit our data using the training data and now we are scoring it to get some metric of accuracy and you can see we are performing at 96.666 percent which is really good um for iris data set this is about the highest you're going to get uh you'll see some people hit 100 percent most of the time that's because they either got lucky with their training splits or they're overfitting to their data or something so um 96 if, if you get that it's a very good score but we can try to see if we can get any more accuracy out of it i'm not sure if we are but this is just a good way of figuring out how you can improve your decision tree so we're going to start looking at some of the hyperparameters that you can use to fine tune your decision tree and for those who didn't tune into the sk learn tutorial um, you can use a whole bunch of different parameters and start searching for what are the optimal uh, what's the optimal solution for your training? So I'm going to define a new dictionary called parameters. And we're going to be looking at a few parameters that the uh, that are specific to the decision tree. First is the criterion. And criterion has a couple values, but we're going to be looking at uh, Gini and entropy. All right, so what is this? Well, Criterion is the kind of the instructions for how to split your um, nodes within the decision tree. And these are two distinct ways of doing it. So we're going to be looking at what is the best combination between these two along with the other uh, hyperparameters. Next, we're going to be looking at splitter. Again, this is how, um, how your nodes are going to be split. And whether that is going to be based on the um, best split or randomly, uh, we will check both of those. Okay, we're going to look at max depth. So this is how deep your tree is, how um, far down it will go with all, the, all of its nodes. And we're going to be checking a lot of different values for this. So I am going to use numpy np.linspace. 
And this is just going to uniformly pull out some values. So I'm going to do values from 5 to 90, and I want 18 of them. So this should go incrementally up by 5 all the way until 90. <clears throat> and I want to make sure this is as type. Um, it's looking for np.int. I'll just say n32. So I was looking for an integer for each of these. When you do lin space, it's going to automatically put them into floating points. So um, just make sure you convert those. Okay, we got our max depth. Now we are going to do the minimum number of samples uh, to split. Um, and I need to make this a string. So min samples split. And again, we're going to be testing a lot of values for these. So I'm going to do an np.arrange. And we're going to be testing all integers from 2 to 10. Okay. And the last thing we'll do is the max number of features um, that we're going to be looking at within the trees. Different ways of doing it are there's an auto function that will just automatically, um, whatever the predefined value is, it will put in there. Uh, you can do the square root of the number of features, or you can do the log of the number of features. And we will stop here for now. Okay, so those are all the parameters that we're going to be looking at um, in order to be passing into the decision tree. So we will go ahead and use the randomized search to figure out. Um, it's, it's just going to randomly test not all of these, but it's going to randomly take a selection of these to figure out which one worked uh, the best and gave the optimal solution. So I'm going to find rand underscore search. And this is going to take the randomized search CV. That's the function that we input. We need to pass it what classifier we're using. So that is the decision tree classifier. Okay. And again, um, like I did before, I want to fix my random state to one. And I'm it's now looking for the parameters that it's going to be randomly searching. That is the variable that we just created. So I'll pass in parameters. The scoring, I want it to be selecting these based on the accuracy. So find the optimal um, pairing for the accuracy. And I will just push this down a line so we can get away from my head down there. Um, I'm going to, once again, fix the random state to one. And I think that's, uh, let me do the cross validation. So we want five folds. Okay, so that is all we need to do for the randomized search. So what is this doing? Well, it's taking the decision tree classifier and it's just randomly selecting parameters based on what we gave it here in order to find the optimal accuracy. And it's using cross validation. So we're passing in five um, for that. So we can go ahead and do a random search dot fit this is where we're again fitting the training data so x train and y train and that will train the model now um what is this going to spit out well <clears throat> it's obviously going to give us the final accuracy but it's going to give us the best um best parameters the best combination of parameters that it was able to find so we will call those random params and that will be equal to random search dot best underscore params. And I want to go ahead and just print those out. So print, uh, sorry, print rand params and just make some room. Now, other things are we can print the training accuracy. So that'll be train ACC. And that is going to be equal to um, random search dot best score. So like best params up here, I actually forgot the, there should be a, another line under here. So best params and best score, this would be the best score that I was able to find. Um, what else? And now not only we want the training accuracy, but we want our um test accuracy so we want to predict using the model that we just created so rand search dot predict we want to predict using the test data so x test y test and that is going to spit out the predictions um based on the classes that 
we're trying to predict. So zero, one, or two. And we can go ahead and print test accuracy as the accuracy underscore score, passing in the predictions and the y test values. And we don't need y test in here because we're going to be pred uh, predicting out here. Okay, so what is this doing? We are taking and finding what the best parameters were, and we're just going to print what the best parameters were. Then we're going to say, what was the best training accuracy you were able to achieve? We are taking the classifier after that, passing in the test data, the X test data, and then printing what the accuracy was for the test data. The accuracy score right here is what we imported way back up here in metrics. So let me go ahead and run this. And I will make some space. All right. These are the optimal parameters that it was able to find um, for each of the hyperparameters that we were looking at. And you can see, like, for instance, max depth, it, was, it found that 25 was the best for the ones that it actually looked at. Our training accuracy actually improved way back here in this decimal point. So it did improve, not enough to actually make a difference. And our test accuracy is the same. Um, but that is, especially when you get into harder problems, that is a way of finding a more optimal solution. Now, I typically like to, once I do a random search of a lot of different variables, I like to take what I learned from the random search and do a grid search. So the difference between random and grid search is random will just randomly sample all of the different parameters that you are looking at in order to find the optimal solution. Grid search will try every single one of them. So what I will do is I will take what I learned from random search and just look around that point to see um, if we can find an even better solution using grid search. Okay, so to do that, I am going to define max depth as a variable. This is going to be np.arrange, and I want to learn what I did from here. So max depth was 25, so I want to take um, the rand params. That's the variable that I stored the parameters in. So I want to take the random parameters at max depth, and I want to look from three below it to three above it. So minus three, and then I will take the same thing, copy it over, and I want to say plus three. So I'm looking at three below the max depth that was found and three above it, um, and every combination in between. So that is what I will do for max depth. I will do something similar for the min samples split. And that would be equal to np dot arrange brand params at min samples split. Um, I will do the same thing. So I'll do three below, three above. And we'll take this and just copy this over quickly. Okay, so those will, since those are our only two values, um, we'll go ahead and work with those. So I'm going to take parameters that I had before and just copy it down. I'm going to, instead of testing both of these, I'm going to take what I learned from before. So this is going to be equal to, if I just delete everything in this list, the random params at criterion. Okay. Um, same thing for this one is the random params at splitter. Max depth is equal to this one that we just created up here. So max depth. And now it, it won't be a case here because it's still a valid answer when I subtract three. However, if I had a really low value for max depth, like I had two, and I did, and I subtracted three from it. Well, we're now in the negative numbers, and it's not a valid um, depth anymore. So to do that, I'm going to say I only want the max depth where the max depth is greater than or equal to two. So I only want values that are above two. 
Again, in this case, our max depth is high enough, so it's not going to matter. But this is just a way of helping filter that out. Uh, min sample split. Again, same thing. It's that variable we created above. I only want it where the min samples split um, is greater than or equal to two. Okay, and the last variable will be the max features, which we have up here. So that will be rand params at max underscore, um, which one? Oh, features right here, this one, features. Okay, so just to run through this quickly again, anything that had a number value, I'm looking three up or three below, or sorry, yeah, three below and three up. And if it didn't have a number value, it was just a set into a string or for how like criterion or splitter was optimized, then I'm only using what the random search came back with. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and copy pretty much everything I had up here uh, for random search, except for I'm going to change everywhere it says random search, I'm gonna call this grid search. And the function is grid search CV, still passing in the same classifier with the random state. The parameters are the ones I just created. Scoring is still the accuracy, still random state, and CV is equal to five. I'm going to fit the grid search algorithm with the training in the uh, or the X train and Y train test set. I now have something called grid parameters where I'm taking the um, best parameters from the grid search and saving them and I will go ahead and print those the best accuracy will be printed the then I'll use it to predict the training data and that should be good uh, let me go ahead and run this see Random params is not defined. And that's because it was called rand params up top. <clears throat> Another one. Um, oh, that's why. Uh, <laughs> because the grid search is t uh, checking every single one of them, there is no random state for the grid search. So we can get rid of that one. Is not just no longer the grid search or the random search up there. So no inherent randomness. And let's go ahead and run that. All right. Now we got our accuracy. It found comparing to the up top here. So the criterion still entropy max depth. It found that twenty two was actually better than twenty five. It found all right. So max features was the same. Min sample split was the same, and the splitter was the same. Now, again, our training, you know, slightly went up compared to not having any hyperparameters set. That's just because of how easy this problem is. When you start working with harder problems, you'll probably see a difference here when you start looking at uh, different combinations of hyperparameters. One last thing I will show you, print classification report. This is, again, one of the um, functions that we imported up here from sklearn metrics. And we are going to be passing in the predictions and the Y uh, test values. So the predictions from the grid search. And go ahead and print that. Now you can see precision recall, F1 score, and you can see how well or how bad you performed in each of these. Um, <clears throat> looks like class two had a lot um, that was wrong with it for the false alarms for the recall, or for the uh, false negatives, sorry. Um, but you can see just ways of dissecting how you predicted. And on that, I will stop. That is all we're going to do for decision trees. Uh, this was just supposed to be a gentle introduction into them. I hope you got something out of this. Next, we are going to, uh, go ahead and use the KNN algorithm, do the same exact things, so even get better performance out of this. Um, but for now, I will sign off. If you've got anything from this, definitely like the video. Stay tuned to the series. Definitely check out uh, other videos and other series I've put together. Um, hope you guys got something out of it, and I will see you in the next video.